As a returning staple to the Diablo franchise, the Barbarian is the poster child of overwhelming strength, brutality, and weapon mastery. Now, in Diablo 4, the Barbarian has undergone some big changes to add a little bit more complexity and depth to the class. Don't worry, though, if you're someone who has always been a longtime fan of the Barbarian, you will still feel right at home. So, what makes the Barbarian such a devastating class to consider? Well, first, they deal massive amounts of damage with their core skills and additional buffs that then support those skills. They're also the only class that has the Berserking buff, which gives them huge increases to damage and movement speed. And speaking of movement, they do have multiple skills to help them navigate the battlefield quickly. And then lastly, they're also incredibly tanky. They can take a beating and keep on ticking. That's just who they are. But as with all things, there are always trade-offs. So while the Barbarian appears to be an absolute force, they do still have a few weaknesses to understand. So one, they're incredibly resource dependent. Fury is what they use to fuel their attacks and it is consumed very quickly by core skills. They also have very long cooldowns, which can put a long pause on your damage output during longer fights. In short, they're incredibly bursty, but don't expect them to have a ton of sustain, especially early on. They also have a lack of ranged options, which makes sense for a Barbarian. So you're going to spend lots of time in close range, which can put you more in harm's way, and some players don't like to be up close and personal with enemies. They're also very slow in the early game. Playtesters confirm that the Barbarian class does take a while to ramp up and really kind of come into its own. So if you're someone that doesn't really like a slow burn type of class, the Barbarian might not be the one to try out first. So now that we have a handle on what makes and breaks a Barbarian, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about what makes them truly unique, and that is the Arsenal system. So Barbarian's Arsenal system allows them to select a specific equipped weapon for every attack skill and provide bonuses for those skills. So here are a few examples. So one-handed axes, for instance, will grant increased critical strike chance against injured enemies. One-handed maces will increase damage to stunned enemies. Two-handed swords will cause a portion of your damage to apply a bleed to targets. And then pole arms will increase your lucky hit chance. Now, there are more options out there. This is not everything that we have access to. And I'm guessing there will be even more that'll come later in the game. But still, you can see how versatile this system can be just from these couple examples here. It also helps build a certain play style that you're after. And to top all that off, you can even swap these assignments around either mid-combat, out of combat, and both of these things are possible from what we've heard from playtesters. So now that we know what makes a barb unique, let's dive into their skills and see what they bring to the table. So let's go ahead and let's dive into things starting with the basic skills. So in terms of our basic skills, we have Bash. This is a classic. It's been around for as long as I can possibly remember. Bash is going to bash the target, and on the fourth bash, you're going to stun the target. Then we have Flay, which you're going to flay the enemy and inflict bleed damage. Next, we have Frenzy, which is going to unleash a flurry of blows, dealing damage to targets in front of you. And lastly, we have Lunging Strike, which is going to cause you to lunge forward and strike the enemy. Next up are our core skills. Remember, these are the meat and potato skills. They're going to consume resources, but they're going to deal more damage. So we have Hammer of the Ancients, which is going to slam down your hammer and deal AoE damage. We have Rend, which is going to cleave enemies in front of you, which is going to deal damage and inflict bleeds. Whirlwind, a classic. You're going to spin around and deal damage to nearby enemies. Double Swing, you're going to swing both your weapons, and then enemies caught in the center will receive damage from both weapons. Upheaval, you're going to tear into the ground and fling debris forward. Personally, this is one of my favorite skills, no matter what action RPG it's in. I don't know, I just love the way upheaval typically works. Next, we have defensive. So we got ground stomp. We're going to deal damage and stun enemies. Think of like a thunderclap. We also have iron skin. So you're going to gain a barrier to absorb damage equal to a portion of your missing health. Challenging shout is going to cause us to taunt nearby enemies and gain a damage reduction. Then lastly, we have Rallying Cry. We're going to shout and grant allies increased movement speed and increased resource generation because teamwork makes the dream work. Next up, we have Brawling, another war cry here. So we're going to shout to increase you and your allies' damage for a duration. Next up is Kick. We're going to kick and knock back enemies, but enemies that are kicked into terrain will take increased damage and are stunned. And that's a new thing in Diablo 4. Remember, they talked about this quite a bit. 
is you're going to have a lot of verticality in the game. You're going to be able to go up and down terrain. You're going to be able to interact with terrain and kick is one of those things that's going to really kind of show that off. When you kick an enemy, they'll hit a wall, hit a cliff, and they're going to take increased damage and become stunned. Then we have Leap, another Barbarian classic. You're going to leap forward and slam down, dealing damage and knocking back enemies. So for those of you who are Leap Smash mains, this is definitely possible within Diablo 4. And next we have Charge. So for Charge, you're going to become unstoppable and rush forward, pushing enemies with you and then throwing them, dealing damage and knocking them back. So that's it for our brawling skills. Let's move into our high damage skills, Weapon Mastery. To kick things off, we have Death Blow. Death Blow, you're going to deal a large amount of damage to enemies in front of you. And if you kill an enemy, the cooldown is then reset, allowing you to continue chaining Death Blows together. Then we have Rupture, which is going to skewer enemies in front of you, dealing damage. Then you're going to rip your weapon out, damaging enemies for their total bleed amount and removing all bleeds from them. And lastly, we have Steel Grasp. You're going to throw out chains that deal damage and pull enemies towards you. So that wraps up Weapon Mastery. Let's talk about Ultimates. So for your Ultimate skills, you have Call of the Ancients. You're going to summon three Ancients to help you in battle. Korlik will leap at enemies and frenzy his weapons. Talik will spin in a whirlwind to damage nearby enemies. And Matawik will upheave the ground to deal damage. Next, we have Iron Maelstrom. This is a three-step skill. So the first time you press it, you're going to attach a chain to your two-handed bludgeoning weapon and slam the ground to deal damage and stun. When you press the skill a second time, you're going to attach a chain to your two-handed slashing weapon and then swipe it dealing damage and applying bleeds to all enemies in front of you. Press it for a third time and you'll attach a chain to your dual wield weapons and swing them around dealing damage. And then lastly, we have Wrath of the Berserker. You're going to gain Berserking, which is that skill we talked about earlier, buff rather. This is going to give you massive increases to damage and movement speed. So you're going to gain that as well as unstoppable, which means you can't be stunned for a short duration. And then during that duration, if you deal direct damage with basic skills, you'll get another berserking buff for another short duration. So again, this is one that's going to be, you're on a war path. Let's get berserking and unstoppable rolling. And then we'll be a freight train running through anything in front of us. And then lastly, we have our ultimate passives. So we have Unconstrained. This is going to increase Berserk's maximum duration by five seconds. Now, back in Wrath of the Berserker, they did mention five seconds is the duration at this point in time. So this would move it to 10 seconds. And you're also going to increase the damage bonus that comes with Berserk. So if you're a Berserk-based build, Unconstrained is probably the passive you want to take. Then we have Walking Arsenal. Dealing direct damage with a two-handed bludgeoning, two-handed slashing, or dual-wield weapons will grant increased damage. While all three bonuses are active, gain additional damage buffs. So, if you have your two-handed bludgeoning, you deal direct damage, you will get an increased damage buff. Switch over to your slashing weapon, deal damage, get the buff. Same thing with dual-wielding weapons. If you can balance all three of those, you're going to gain an additional damage buff while those are active. Next is Unbridled Rage. So core skills will gain a large damage increase, but they will cost double. And lastly, we have Gushing Wounds. Killing an enemy will create an explosion that inflicts bleeds to nearby enemies. Now I'm a big bleed build guy. I absolutely love bleeding builds. Honestly, I love all damage over time builds. To me, they're just super fun. So Affliction Warlock is definitely my, my style when it comes to World of Warcraft stuff as well. Gushing Wounds sounds like one I'd be very, very interested in and then building around to try to maximize those bleeds. So overall, guys, the Barbarian is the king of brutality, using rage, primal strength, and momentum to just wipe out hordes of enemies and be, in, like I said, an absolute freight train, just rolling through stuff. So what do you guys think? I want to hear from you. Is this the class that you want to play in Diablo 4, or do you have another one in mind? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like Diablo content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Thank you.